Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi and Wait. SMC staff. Alaykum As Salaam. After experiencing the life of tariqah, I feel a separation from the physicality. Now I get extremely disturbed from the negative actions of others. How do I deal with discerning feeling it causes? Almost like I get disgusted. Second, my spouse is a born Muslim but smokes cigarettes, marijuana, speaks vulgar, etc. I'm not trying to expose him or put him down. I'll, I only want to ask advice on how to deal with this in the best way. I feel completely out of place in my environment. Is this also normal? Yeah, what was the first question? <laughs> uh, how do I deal with discerning feeling it causes? Yeah, Alhamdulillah when he guides a servant and this is a guidance when a falsehood is lifted and clarity is granted. <clears throat> when this process is beginning, Allah is not giving us these abilities, this understanding, this clarity to judge His creation. So that's why the whole package of tariqah, I just talked about it, was to be a qurban. Means sacrifice yourself to be of service. So the shaykhs they don't take from the caliber of their understanding and reality. They could not talk to anyone and tolerate anyone because they can smell people. They can smell even comments of people. They can smell the bad character of people. They can see the lights off of people. They, if it was about not tolerating they would have all run to like a cave or an ocean, see? They can't tolerate, they would not tolerate. But they learned that Allah only opens because He wants them to serve. So our life is to be of service, is to educate, to build up, to give people hope, to tell them that if you do like this it would be better, if you do like that they would be better. So there's a whole process. But for one whom is starting it's not the time to educate but it's a time to elevate. So it means first learn your way, understand your practices, build your energy, build your meditation, be patient and loving with God's creation. We're not here to judge them and to, to attack them but to build ourselves. Later when you're built and your energy is developed, relationship and your training has been developed, at that time you become an ambassador for truth. Now you may open your mouth and fight with everyone and that's not the purpose of enlightenment. Enlightenment was to bring light upon a dark earth, not to yell at people and make them go deeper into the darkness. We don't work for devils but we work for the heavens. Our job is to take people back into heaven, not to fight them so they go back into the hands of devils, inshaAllah. <coughs> See this is from a brother in, from London. <clears throat> I have a question for you Sayyidi, what's the dangers of confidence? I fear that I have too much confidence. Can confidence break my connection and is it okay to fear your own confidence? You confidence, everything is like a fine line. Confidence and pride are a fine line. You can be confident in your ability, in your love, in your practices. But you should also be taking a path of humility. So somebody their qirat is good, their recitation is good, they think their prayers are strong. But then tariqah comes and teaches, in public hide your salah. So many times people come and they complain with Naqshbandi salah that, why you guys pray faster than other people? Because the wisdom, the wisdom is what we want to do, we do for Allah privately. If you're one who meditates, contemplates and you love to pray long periods of time, don't do that in public because this good action will be stolen by your nafs. As soon as you do it you're ah, oh, I bet everyone's watching me, look ah, alhamdulillah they probably think I'm so pious, alhamdulillah. And the ego now took your action and it's no longer for Allah so then they pray moderate, they do their prayers unidentified by anyone and it's finished. And at home when no one sees, 
that's the time in which they pray, they do their zikr, they cry on their carpet. So that in public people think, this one is nothing, I've watched them all the time, doesn't even look like he knows how to pray correctly. Because they come to here and they say, oh you guys don't know how to pray as if they know how to pray. But at home they do the reverse. They come and they pray in front of everybody, so amazing and at home they probably miss their salah because there's no one to watch them. Their ego is not excited about doing it and they don't want to do it. You see those same ones at the wudu station. When it come time for Jummah wudu, oh my goodness the wudu became ghusl. The water flowing, wow, the cup is all over, dripping all over, faces, hairs, clothes, all the clothes have to be wet to come out to show you, I know how to use water. <laughs> Where in public it should have been like a cup. Sayyidina ibn Arabi salam said, pray and we'll make wudu like a crazy man, just don't talk to anyone, pick over your head fast, get out and make. And when you use for istinja, when you have to wash your privates, wash with water privately, they do everything so that people don't see them. Zahiri they do everything for people to see them. You want to make a full wash and everything you do that at home, go take a shower. That's why many of awliya their all rights were to shower before each salah to be hard upon themselves. And there wasn't showers with hot water, these were showers in, in mountainous regions where the water was ice water. So they didn't shower in front of people to give the appearance but at home when no one was around fajr time they're ordered to make a shower for every fajr. It's very hard to freeze and in, in, when you're nice and warm and want to jump right back into your bed, you're freezing. So no their whole struggle was the opposite and different. Which now today is ajeeb. When you look at the Sufi mannerisms people don't understand it, why are you people like this? Everything was to come against the nafs and not allow the nafs to take a portion of their good deeds. And the good deed that is done hidden for Allah, Allah alone will be rewarded by Allah inshaAllah. The deed that is seen by people will be rewarded by the people. They may give you a better job as Imam or something. Assalamu Sayyidi, we have seen pictures of holy maqam of Rosa Sharif and the holy grill. What is the better ad adab to visualize ourselves in front of? Wherever you can, just visualize the Rosa Sharif, the grill and just you're holding on to the grill. And asking Sayyidina Muhammad holy nazar to be upon us. That I'm just coming here, I don't need to see anything, I'm just visualizing this maqam Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem, I'm not worthy of looking at anything, I'm just here. That dress me, bless me, have pity upon me and build that love and that relationship with the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad never expecting anything. Don't keep saying, I want to see, I want to see, I want to see. Don't put an expectation and come through the door with humility inshaAllah that I'm not anyone worthy of seeing. I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Dress me and bless me from your lights. They like the approach of humility and Prophet is hearing everything. As Alaikum Sayyidi, I would like to ask our Sayyidi if there is a spiritual wisdom and remedies for someone who is having difficulties to find a partner for marriage. Thank you. You have a very difficult time. There is a difficulty, Salawat al-Fatiha, reciting as many times as you can, at least seven times a day for an opening from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and must take from the ocean that's closest to you. If you know the, the masjid in the area and they're good sort of Ahlul Sunnah masjid and you think they're pro-tariqah people then ask from the community leaders who know all the different families that they're looking and in, in interested in a spouse and they have to take from that ocean. Other ethnic backgrounds they require to go through their families and their families are very sort of locked on that understanding and you don't want to create any type of conflict, oh I want to ask somebody else, you go through your family. 
But now is even more difficult time because the majority of people are running after dunya. So there are very few people now interested in getting married because they just want to have fun and play in dunya and that's the danger and that's the difficulty of the times we live in. And that's why many of the hadiths of last days describe that type of difficulty. Why? Because these people are all just wanting to play. If they have a little bit of money they just want to go out and play and entertain themselves. So I pray that Allah open something and, and dress people who are in need of a spouse that Allah dress them with an ability that that, that opening come to them inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu and Eid Mubarak. Wa alaykum as salaam Eid Mubarak. Uh, Sayyidi, I missed my daily awrad a couple of times and mm -hmm. I feel bad. What should I do Sayyidi? I even miss doing the basic parts of it and I am so backwards. Help me Ya Sayyidi, Madad Ya Sayyidi, forgive me for being ignorant and please pray for me to be steadfast and have good character please. Ameen, Ameen. Allah, Allah bless you and all those who are watching and all those who are present with us and uh, forgive me. It's a uh, no problem, you, you forgot it, you forgot it. The past is the past, it's only the future that is, is important. But we said before that the awrad and our practices are time management. So just like work and you don't miss work, you don't miss showing up on time, you don't miss projects, you don't miss homework, all of our life we were trained in time discipline. So this is the most important time discipline, you can even get an app for time disciplining. So that I'm going to do this part of my awrad at my fajr or right when I'm about to go for my work I'll pray my, my fajr and then do my awrad. I'll do the, the zikrs, the Allah and the salawats, I'll do the salawats on the way going to work, I'll do the zikr of Allah on the way coming back. So you can break the awrad up into different sections. The zikr of the awrad you can be broken up. The beginning part of the awrad, the recitations all the way up to the idah takes nothing more than 10, 15, 20 minutes depending upon if you've memorized the Qur'an, Surat Al-Nas, Surat Al-Falaq, Surat Al-Ikhlas. That doesn't take time but the dhikr of Allah Allah, 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 1500 times, you say, okay I'm going to do it on the way to work. The salawat minimum 300 to 500 times I'm going to do on the way coming back from work. You make a discipline, there's apps even now and you stick to it. But if you don't have that discipline and all of a sudden every night at 11 o'clock is when you're going to do your awrad then no you'll probably fall asleep, miss it, miss it and then that's all that shaitan wants. So it's a matter of time management inshaAllah. And there's apps that can help you now and they send up a reminder, even your iPhone can do it with a reminder. It says, uh, make salawats and then put reminder when? three in the afternoon daily and your phone pops up make salawats. And that's you know, you remember, okay now I have to do my thousand or five hundred salawats at that time. Do the minimum of the awrad so that you are minimum connected to these shaykhs all the time. Then you have extra time go up you know 10,000 Allahs, 10,000 salawats when you're sitting with your family that's okay. But do the minimum awrad so that it's completed every day inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi, what is Mount Kaf and why is so significant with Imam Mahdi salam? Alhamdulillah, no permission to talk on that. <laughs> we gave you a clue already, Jabal Kaf and the Haq and that reality of where their souls are located. And from that ocean their souls are being dressed and blessed and moving towards this dunya. They are not sustained from dunya, means that their soul is in an area being dressed and blessed by the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad These are the people of haqq, these are the imams of haqq, that they're coming and dressed and blessed from that reality and moving towards this earth for their zuhoor and their appearance to appear. But has a tremendous reality with the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Say this is from a brother who hasn't taken a shahada yet, he's asking, uh, Hi staff, my salah is incomplete, mostly English, three quarters. Should I wait to take my shahada on account of this? 
May Allah protect and bless us in this life and the next. Yeah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Wait, you just say right now with me. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. One second also. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Inna alladheena yubayyunaka inna ma yubayyun Allah, Yad Allahi fawqa aydihim, Faman naqawda inna ma yanguta ala nafsi, Wa man awfa bima ahad, Allahu Allah fasayyatun ajran azeem. Radina billahi rabban wa bi islami deenan wa bi Sayyidina Muhammadun sallallahu alaihi wasallam rasulun wa nabiyun wa bi Qur'ani kitabun. Wallahu ma naqulu wakeel wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And we accept and ask, qabilna bi Sayyidina Sultanil Awliya Imam Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Shaykhuna wa Murshidina wa Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil. Shaykhuna wa Murshidina and all our beloved shaykhs, Mawlana Shaykh Isham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Wallahumma Naqulu Waqeel. Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haqq, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haqq, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haqq. Ya Rabbi, illa sharif al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alihi wa ashabihi kiram. ولم الشيخين في طريقة نشبندية العلية خاصة روح إمام طريقة قبل خليك شان نشبن محمد ويس البخاري سلطان أولي الشيخ عبد الله فايز الدغستاني سلطان أولي الشيخ محمد نازم حكاني مولانا الشيخ الشام كباني الشيخ عدنان كباني الشيخ محمد عادل مبدأ خالق الخشدواني سائر زمان سيد محمد المهدي عليه السلام وروح الله سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام سيف الله سيدنا عليه السلام ثم سام بك صديق Sayyidina Ummah, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Sayyidina Fatima alayhi salam alayhi salam, wa sayir wa sadatina wa siddiqina al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillah everything Mawlana Shaykh describes is go at a slow pace. You can print out the salah in Romanized Arabic. And you take that in your hand, stand up and you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim and then ruku and then you go into ruku, come back up. So you can read along with your salah. If that's too much for you then at least make a sujood once a day, twice a day, three times a day, then build it up to four times a day, five times a day, just going into prostration and saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Whatever you think you can do and progress at a speed that is moderate and easy for you, there's no rush, Allah is not going anywhere. You've given your shahada, so alhamdulillah you are a Muslim and you are a Naqshbandi. Allah bless you, dress you and forgive me, inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surah Fatiha. Welcome to all these realities. Here we go. Click the link now to subscribe.